Okay, this section is talking about solving and proving trig identities. This is probably one of the most important sections that you're going to do, particularly if you're going to be going on to calculus. This is really important because in calculus you'll be expected to know how to simplify different expressions and so this is, it gives you a foundation for that. Before we get into solving the trig identities, that's why I have this part covered up here, we're going to first talk about a list of identities. Now these are identities that we've talked about already uh, in this class and these are ones that come directly from the unit circle. This is a, uh, a list of ones that we've already done before in the past. The ones up here are ones you've probably already seen already. We have the, these are our reciprocal identities, these three here, cosecant, uh, can be written as a sine, secant can be written as a cosine, and we have cotangent can be written uh, as a tangent. However, we also have these up here which also deal with sines and cosines. So there's a way that we can take the tangent and cotangent and rewrite those uh, with sines and cosines. Then the other one that comes up a lot is this one, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. That comes right from the unit circle because the formula is x squared plus y squared equals one. We talked about that, that where the formula comes from. Now if you take that formula and you solve for either sine squared or cosine squared, we get two other identities that come from it. They're really the same exact thing as the first one there, it's just that we're solving for two different things, either sine squared or we're solving for cosine squared. So, those are uh, three identities. Now these down here you may not have seen too much, with, we may have done too much with it already in this class, however these down here can also be derived from sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. For instance if you take this equation here and you take that one and you divide through by cosine squared, you get sine squared over cosine squared that gives you a tangent and then you get cosine over cosine is one and you get one over cosine which is secant so then we actually end up getting a variation of this one here so if you take this equation and divide through instead by cosine divide through by sine squared well then we end up getting the ones down below here so these identities down below actually all come from sine squared plus cosine squared equal one so first we have to really understand these lists of identities because you're going to be referring back to them when you do problems in this section. So you want to make sure you have this list with you, at least when you first attempt the homework, you want to make sure you have that there because you will be referring back to them a lot. We will do that also uh, with these problems that we're going to show. So now, the type of, of problem that you're going to see in this section is one like this. It'll say, establish the identity and we basically have something that looks like this. What you want to do with these problems is you want to show that one side equals the other side. Now in order to accomplish that, I have a list of techniques here that you want to take a look at. These are uh, techniques that you can do, so as you're working out a problem like this where you establish the identity, we're going to refer back to these techniques. The first thing that you want to do is, if the problem looks like we can change it into sines and cosines, you want to do that. So how do you change into sines and cosines? We're going to use these identities right here. So these top identities are ones that will allow you to change everything into sines and cosines. A lot of times, if you change into sines and cosines, then you'll be able to get certain things to cancel and, and you'll be able to uh, show that one side equals the other. The other technique, uh, we'll take a look at some different examples uh, in this section that deal with these different techniques. Another one is factoring, so sometimes you can factor something top and bottom, get something to cancel out. You can also get common denominators. If there's two different fractions, you can use common denominators to combine them together. And then if none of the three, first three techniques uh, work, then we'll also look at an example where you might have to do number four, multiply one side by a conjugate. So like on the bottom of the fraction, if you have one plus sign, you can multiply by one minus sign instead. That's what I mean by a conjugate. So these are all the techniques that we're gonna use throughout this section, and we're also gonna be referring back to our list of identities. So you wanna make sure you have uh, all this written down because we'll definitely be referring back to it. So here's what the first problem we're going to do. We want to establish the identity. I would look at my techniques here and the, one of the first things it says to do is change everything into sines and cosines. We're going to use our list of identities to do that. So first, when we do that, cosecant is the same thing as 1 over sine. That's the way I can take a cosecant and turn it into a sine by using that identity right there. Then tangent, I can use an identity for this one as well. I want to use that one. I can change that to sine over cosine. And I can also put an identity for, for secant. The identity for secant would be one over uh, cosine. 
Then what I notice is both of these are going to cancel because I've made it all sines and cosines and you have 1 over cosine theta equals 1 over cosine theta. So both sides are equal. You've proven that one side equals the other. So what is your answer on this? The answer is actually not this. The answer you're going to do on these is actually the work to show me how you get from here down to here. The whole purpose of this section is I'm testing if you know how to manipulate both sides to get from one side down to the other. Now this equal sign that's here is not going to be a traditional equal sign as far as bringing things across the equal sign or if you cross multiply or do something on both sides. You can't do that in this section. The reason why is because before you do all this work, we haven't established yet if this is really an identity. So if it's not an identity, that means this, this is not our traditional equal sign. That means we can't bring anything across uh, both sides and do the same techniques we did before with regular equations. So what you want to do is pretend that this equal sign is like a wall and you're going to take one side and work it all the way down until you get one side to equal the other side. That's really the whole technique that you're going to be doing uh, for problems in this, in this section. So now that we've taken a look at the identities and techniques, uh, the next future videos are going to have more problems that deal with these techniques and the identities.